A lot of bodybuilders or people who use juice would always test the liver, kidneys, and all that stuff. But the heart is the main thing, mm -hmm. and um, it accumulates, right? So I, but I don't, ex I don't think people would do that. But I'm very, very rigorous with heart tests, and I would do uh, the most uh, intricate um, heart test available, which is a um, a CT scan, a CT angio scan. Okay where they put um, a dye in you and you go under the MRI machine and it gives you a full image of all your arteries. That sounds cool as shit. It's, it's, DK, we need to get one of those MRI machines <laughs> in here, bro. We need to do some stories. And that. Like I went to the Jabba podcast and they put some dye in me at the same time. It's such a weird feeling. Can you put glow in the dark dye? So I'm, when you put a UV light on, you're just like, I'll, I'll ask, ask them. them. Yeah, that's yeah. Like Halloween costume already done for you, bro. And just then I'll take a selfie. Walk around and... naked, just <laughs> die, and you, and you see all the veins around. Uh, and <laughs> I, and I and it's not easy to do these tests either. Mm. Like like the doctor has to ha be concerned, or there has to be something wrong. But I'm very fortunate enough to have a doctor who understands what I'm doing, and I never start a season unless all my test results are mint. Hmm. Like, I don't want to even have any risks. My cholesterol has to be in range. Um, my calcium score has to be zero. I don't want to be at any risk uh, to have any potential dangers. So I'd always do these very intricate tests. And then I'd, 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 I'd have my cardiologist say, I give you the green light. Hmm. Guys, welcome to another episode of Jibba with Jabba. Today I'm joined by Mahmoud Ad Durra. Now, listen, I have a bit of a problem here. What's that? Because <clears throat> usually I look pretty sick when I have my guests here. <laughs> <laughs> Why is the vein on your bicep bigger than my bicep, bro? <laughs> I get that a lot. What's going on, man? I used to be a drummer. Yeah, I that's why it is, yeah? That, that's exactly why it is, yeah. So all I need to do is drum. Like, all this time I've been working out, doing drop sets, giant sets. It's all, and all, it's all I just all have useless. to get some sticks, just right? Just get some sticks and hit some beats. Yeah, the, light, the lighter the stick, the better, right? <laughs> yeah, I've been missing out this whole time. Well, I'm going to yeah. go to chopsticks then, even lighter than drumsticks yeah, and get shredded. That's, that's, how you get, that's how you look like you that. Let me see the forearm. Why do you have Google Maps on your arm, bro? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, bro? I think the forearm is genetic, though, because I've never worked my forearms before. Yeah, neither have I. Yeah. What kind of shows? Is, is that why you have that I shirt haven't. little rolled up a little yeah, bit? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I would, little bit. Usually I wouldn't do that. What, but, you what, know, what, are, trying, what are you trying to do here? <laughs> <laughs> you see that that's, that's not going to help. If yeah. you see any horses walking around missing some shoes, then you know. <laughs> <laughs> then you know. Welcome, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Welcome man. to I'm, Dubai. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. We were mentioning before. It's not your first time in Dubai, huh? <clears throat> uh, no, actually, this is my second time. Okay, what happened the first time? How come? Uh, so the first time I came was in 2012. I had a job interview. Okay. And uh, it was in an, uh, an oil company. and uh, They wanted you to be a wall? <laughs> a pillar? <laughs> yeah, they were, they were looking for a dam to stop the oil. Or use my hands yeah. to just dig, dig for right? oil. Yeah, they just attach you to a crane. <laughs> <laughs> you know, use your forearms. Yeah. Um, and uh, I passed the interview. And uh, that was a time where I was like kind of struggling in my life. I moved to Canada and I, I tried the bodybuilding thing. Didn't, didn't really work out. Um, yeah, what do you mean? Well, like I did compete. I competed at nationals and I won nationals. Okay. And I thought like, you know, after that, my life would kind of take off. Yeah. No, nothing changed. Nothing happened. Yeah. So I was like, okay, this, I have to go back to my, use my engineering degree. So um, my brother worked at a company called uh, SLB and uh, he hooked me up with an interview. Uh, I did the first interview I passed. The second interview was in uh, Abu Dhabi. I went, I passed, but I didn't get the job because, uh, and this is really funny. Mm. The oil rig that I was assigned to burned down. Just randomly out of nowhere. Like an accident. <laughs> that's for uh, Rabina, but that's, uh, that's and, the reason. Yeah. And all like, there was like 800 employees that- And they were on it? <clears throat> no, no. Assigned there. Okay. I was going to say, that's not as funny no, anymore. No, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was a funny story before. You were like, this is a really funny story. 800 people died on the, on the oil rig. But uh, I, well, it's still not a funny story because yeah, yeah. everyone got laid off, all these people. Wow. And I was one of them. Wow. So, uh, yeah. And it's funny because, like, when I got the job, you know, it was like it was going to be my first 
you know, decent paying salary. Mm. And I remember I used my credit card and went to Dubai Mall. I was like splurging. I was like, I'm going to ball, you know. Mm. And then I didn't get the job. I was like, oh, shit. You know? And then I called the credit card company. Yeah. Listen, how serious <laughs> is this? Uh, <laughs> is paying back? Like, is it kind of like Arab, inshallah, pay back <laughs> all you can? Or are we on the American system where I'm getting charged interest on this year? Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's uh, that was 2012. And um, I'm back here now. Back here again now. Yeah. Are you this... Vainly because you've just uh, done the show. I mean, how, how long ago was that? Three days ago. For real, I am. I have always been. I, I have always played sports. My mm. first, uh, my first sport. I used to play tennis. I did a little bit of uh, martial arts. My first like actual thing where I took it seriously was boxing for two years. Okay. But I was always uh, vascular. Okay. I think that's. A, I, I I do believe it's a genetic thing because you, you have a lot of bodybuilders who, who aren't as veiny. But you definitely weren't that size when you were playing tennis. No. no. <laughs> I'm about to say that backhand no. would have been no. like yeah. phenomenal, bro. <laughs> Get angry and yeah. break down. But you know, in tennis, have you noticed, like some of them just have one big right hand or one big left hand? Uh, that's true, yeah. Big forearm, yeah, too. Yeah. 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 Uh, people who do rowing, it's the same thing because they're, they're usually on one side. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like a team rowing and they have like one forearm much bigger than the other. I've seen that. Yeah, it's crazy. So let's talk about, before we go right back, um, since we're here now, let's talk about the competition. This competition here now. Um, yeah, so uh, this is my second competition back. I uh, I stopped for three years. Um, I had back surgery, and uh, you know the whole the whole idea of bodybuilding competitions was done for me. And I was kind of focusing on my business, my YouTube, and all that, and it was all going very well. But I I don't know something I guess clicked inside. I really wanted to do it again, and obviously there there was a purpose to why I wanted to come back, which we could get into later. Um, I did Vancouver Pro, uh, which is a pro show in Canada. I placed third. That was my first comeback show. Okay, nice. Amazing. This show I knew was going to be, I knew it was going to be a zoo. Because it had like 300 competitors or some it was, crazy so, number, right? Compared yeah. to usually where it's usually like 15 to 20. Yeah. So in my class, there were like 30 people, which is unheard of. Because even, oh. even at the Olympia, it's, it's not that much. Yeah. And the thing is, um, the show here... You got all these guys who can't get visas to go to the States. Mm. So they're all going to, you know, try and come and compete here because mm. that's like the next biggest thing next to the Olympia. Especially the neighboring countries because Iran. Iran with their big, yeah, yeah. freaks yeah, yeah. and, you know, those Eastern European countries, yeah. all these places. They're like, yeah, Dubai is the spot. And the thing is, out of the 30 competitors, um, like a lot of them, you'd see them like, oh, this guy's. I tell my coach, I'm like, is this guy good? Is this guy good? Is this bro? He's like, they're all good. Yeah. So uh, it was, uh, it was, it was pretty intense, very difficult, very fun experience. Um, but yeah, it was a tough show. I mean, it's a crazy world, the whole body bodybuilding world. I, I have a friend of mine who, <clears throat> he's uh, he's a pro. Uh, you might know of him. His uh, name is Samir Trudi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just saw him at the gym. Very good friend of mine. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, we've done an episode before and we, we um, you know, trained in the same gym for a long time. And nice. just watching his journey and there's so much ups and downs in a bodybuilder's life. And, you know, the, the, the prepping and the, you know, feeling like, no, this time I've got it. This time I've got it. Like the amount of times he went for that Olympia where he thought he had it. And it was just like, not this time, not this time, not this time. Like the mental strain that can take on a person and they don't quit. Which also shows the mental strength of the person as well, right? I thought, I, I told myself before the show, if I'm not going to do, if I'm going to be out of the top 10, I'm going to, you know, end the season there. And I did place out of the top 10 and uh, I decided, all right, I'm going to do Romania in three weeks. <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Two days, like not even 24 hours later. Yeah. Like after the show, I was like, I told my coach, listen, you know, it was a fun experience, but, you know, I want to have my fun time now. I want to eat. Yeah. I want to go out. And 24 hours later, I was like, you know, I'm going to do Romania Pro. Yeah. What What is it about bodybuilding that initially kind of got you into it? What What was What was the glamour behind it? Who were your... So I didn't get into bodybuilding for bodybuilding. I was a comic artist. Okay. And I was obsessed with Dragon Ball Z, man. I got a Majin, Majin tattoo no in way. the back of my head. <laughs> nice. And Vegeta was like, you know, I used to draw these characters all day long. And I usually get very obsessive when I focus on, onto something. Mm. And at one point I was like, you know, I, I really want to like fight like these characters. So I started boxing. And two years later, I, I always seemed to have like a, a shoulder issue where my shoulder would get dislocated. 
I don't know if it was the bad coaches over mm. there or it was something wrong with my shoulder. But anyways, doctor told me, go to the gym. You got to build some muscle. Uh, I went to the gym, started lifting weights. I started getting, you know, those little round curves. I was like, God damn, those you know newbie what? gains, right? Yeah, newbie, <laughs> gains, newbie gains are the best. And I was like, you know what? I want to I want to look like these guys. Yeah. And uh, and the goal was never to compete. And I always went for that Dragon Ball look like yeah. very big chest, which yeah, I have yeah. very round shoulders and, and uh, big forearms, too. But I was genetically blessed with yeah. that. And uh, I guess while doing it, um, there was this coach at the gym. He saw me and I was like crazy dedicated. Even my friends would be like, this guy's nuts. I'd wake up five in the morning and I'd try and sleep sometimes at nine just to get my full natural hormonal mm. cycle at yeah, the yeah. time. And um, and this trainer said, you know, I, I always see you and you're like s very serious. And well, I was still a mm. skinny kind of guy, but like really going at it. He's like, what do you want to what are you trying to achieve? Like, you he showed like, him a picture of Vegeta. Yeah, yes. yeah. He's like, you want like abs? You know, yeah. you want to look good on the beach? I was like, no, no, no. I want to be a freak, man. Yeah. And I showed him, you know, Dragon Ball picture. I was like, I want to look like these guys. And he goes like, all right, okay. And then he kind of like helped me out at first, and we did my first uh, competition, like I think a year after. Wow. And it was just, I, I didn't, I don't really enjoy the stage much which mm. is kind of the opposite of what a lot of bodybuilders do for. Like they like the flash and the attention and all that. What I think I, I, I realized that I love about it, and I realized that when I was retired or not competing, is, is that notion of there is a goal that I have to achieve. Mm. There is a challenge that I have to overcome. And uh, you get addicted to that. And when it's gone, it's like you feel like there's something missing. Like, mm. I wake up in the morning now, I got to eat my meals, I got to go to the gym, there's stuff that I got to do. And if I'm not competing at all, I have my own business. So like I wake up whenever I want. And then I kind of go into this spiral of waking up late, sleeping late. And there is not much, you know, I'm a YouTuber mm. and I do like uh, fitness plans. So I have my own schedule. No one tells me what to, what to show up at work. So you just kind of fall out of this routine and it becomes really, you know, haphazard and arbitrary. So I think the bot, what I really love about bodybuilding is the structure and the, like, the fact that there is something to look forward to and a goal to achieve. And if you think about it, that's kind of like, you know, with Dragon Ball, there was always that, you know, Vegeta yeah, yeah. was always training for this bad guy or yeah. to, to be Goku or something. And I, I, it's kind of instilled in there. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. I, I totally understand it because <clears throat> I was in the fitness world for a long time. I was a you know celebrity trainer. I was a, a fitness model sponsor. Even the Dubai Muscle Show, you'd go in there, there'd be pictures of me on the thing. Oh, yeah. and I'd be like, <laughs> PhD <laughs> nutrition, <laughs> get, get your protein. <laughs> um, so I understand that, but I was never in it like you because you know fitness modeling, what we do is like three weeks before a shoot, we're like, all right, cool. Bit of clean, let's get shredded. Bit of, okay. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. just because you maintain, you know, a low body fat anyway. And because fitness models are not like bodybuilders. Like we can stay lean and, and we don't have to be too big. Do you some, know what I mean? Some diazide before the shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Just, yeah. You're done. <laughs> well, you go to the chemist and you'd be like, I need something for dehydration. Like, oh, you have constipation? No, 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 no. I just need it. You know, this is for women on periods, right? Just, I know what I want. Just give it, <laughs> just to, give me. it to me. I, just give it to me. Don't ask questions. Yeah. I know what I want. Yeah. You know, and that whole world. And, you know, I really wanted to touch on the whole PEDs and steroids in this game because it's huge. Yeah. I mean, it's. <laughs> It's it, it's undeniable. I th I think PEDs are used in in a lot of sports. I yeah, mean, for sure, but not in the same way. Not so in for the same example, way. No. In athletics or or running or fighting, they'd be like, okay, take three ml a week of this. Yeah. But then when it comes to bodybuilding, they're like, no, no, horse. I said I said thirty three. Yeah. <laughs> a day. It's like horse doses. Yeah, exactly. You know? And the thing that gets me is that it's difficult because you. So many children look up to you in that in that place and That's in true. the fitness world. And so many children are still kind of children in their head. So if their favorite model or their favorite bodybuilder says, no, I've done this naturally, 
they're going to have that expectation. That, yeah, and they get, they think they're going to achieve it naturally. And then four years down the line, they're like, well, what's going on here? Why am I not getting bigger? Or what's going on? And then you get the other side of it where <clears throat> someone will be in a gym and then they'll be like, in the changing room, come here. I can I can fix you up. You have potential. You have potential. You have potential. You think about competing? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> He's competing now? Yeah. Okay. These other guys don't know. I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah, I know. You have good genetics then, then, here. You yeah. see here? This? You don't and they'll, have... they'll, they'll, they'll like bring up pictures. This guy, me. This guy, me. Yeah. Before he was nothing. This guy, <laughs> yeah. me. And the problem I see with that is there's so much bro science in this world. It's unbelievable. Like you can literally get someone who will write you a cycle. And then another one of your gym friends who's also on steroids and is a bodybuilder or whatever will look at that cycle and go, Bro, who gave you this? It's so bad. You shouldn't do this. Do this one. And then another guy will look at that one and go, who gave you this? This is so bad. So these guys are just taking stuff. Like I remember asking someone who was on a cycle, one of my friends who was training, and I was like, what do you want? It's like, I don't know. I was like, yeah, but what's, the, what's your cycle? I see that sometimes. Yeah, and what's I'm your like, cycle? are you like, out of your mind? Like, I don't know. I just take what he tells me. He just tells me to do this, and he jabs me in the butt. Nuts. And like, and like they, they don't know what they're taking. They don't know their measurements. They don't know anything. And they're just going by what this guy, Hassam, in the gym is telling them to do. Uh, Abu Hamid. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and they're just going with it. And that's so dangerous. Because don't get me wrong. I don't know if you've seen a documentary called Bigger, Stronger, Faster. I have. Steroids done correctly under the supervision of doctors and scientists. Totally fine. I, I don't want to like, uh, <laughs> like not knock on wood. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Uh, I do tests mm. uh, very often, and um, it, it is true to a certain extent that if if it's done correctly, you're 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 pretty safe. But there's also another factor that I don't think a lot of people understand, which is the sport isn't only um, it's not only about genetics of how your muscles are receptive to grow. Mm. It's also how well your body, your heart, and your organs Response to respond <laughs> to all these chemicals. So you, I, I remember I had this client, man. Amazing guy. He's a pilot now, and I'm so mm. happy for him. But He's his your client. Was my client. So he's jacked flying the plane like that. Not even at all. <laughs> so this guy was so adamant to be a bodybuilder. Mm. And his, like, he's one of these people who would not grow if his life depended on it. And he really wanted to cycle. He was cycling before he came to me. And he mm. showed me a cycle. He was like, please fix my cycle, blah, blah. And when I started working with him, bro, like if you'd give this guy two mLs of test a week, his entire back would look horrendous with mm. acne. And the skin would be so horrible. And his blood pressure would go through the roof. And it's like, that's like kind of your body telling you, I don't like this. Mm. Don't put it in me. I don't want it. But the guys are going, oh, you mean you don't want it in the butt? I'll put it in the <laughs> shoulder instead and let's see or how they go. Or they'd switch, yeah, yeah. or they think they'd switch brands or yeah, they'd yeah. take different compounds. But really, I mean, it's, I don't want to say it's luck of the draw, but like some people, their just bodies are not receptive. And you know what? You can even get top pros and you'd get two guys. One of them could be in their, 50s 40s mm. perfect skin full set of hair um just looking healthy and mm. then you get another 20 year old or 25 year old who's like huge potential massive guy bro skin looks like a reptile mm. and you can tell like you can tell when someone is not healthy and like their body's kind of like fighting all that juice that they're taking why are you looking at me like that when you're saying it i'm not on no juice bro <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know. Clean and maybe lean. you're like that I'm client. Like 40. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> yeah. But again, this is the problem because <clears throat> it's one thing with bodybuilders. I feel like it's another thing with influencers and fitness models now. Because everybody's chasing this fitness model body <clears throat> that A is unachievable and B nobody wants to give out their secret right of what they're taking or how they're taking even if their secret probably wouldn't work with someone else but they just pretend that they don't and I, i'm just like why don't you just admit it like i, I find that people will respect you more if you just say hey yeah I'm, i did a little thing or i did it to get there or whatever and i understand there's branding issues there and sponsorship issues because some brands don't want to 
be associated. Attached, associated. But at the same time, <clears throat> by you pretending you're doing it naturally, you, you're making the brand lie with you as well. Yeah, it's um, it, it gives less. You become less valid and authentic, and it's weird because like it's a double. It's a paradox, right? Because mm. like the brands don't want someone to associate, like one of their athletes to associate with, uh, with steroid use. But at the same time, they kind of present themselves as, you know, we're authentic, we're genuine. Mm. But then the guy that you're sponsoring isn't genuine and isn't authentic. Mm. And also because the brands themselves know that you taking their products isn't going to make you like that anyway. So they need to kind that of like too, but find the balance. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, it's funny because that's how I started my YouTube channel. That's how it got popular. There's a book called The Blue Ocean Effect. It's basically, uh, it's about, it talks also about how like there is, there's a certain business model where, you know, there's, there's an industry where everyone does certain things in a certain way. And that's just how it's always been done. Mm -hmm. But then another business model just does the complete opposite of that, which is what Nintendo did. Mm -hmm. So Nintendo wasn't able to compete with Sony and, uh, and Microsoft and they were going downhill. So they made because the yeah so and the target audience usually for video games are young people like seven to i don't know 20 something yeah. so nintendo decided you know what let's target older people and then they came up with the wii mm -hmm. and then boom complete success so i kind of i was when i started my youtube i was like you know and i see all these bodybuilders they'd go on these um, national interviews on tv like uh, egyptian bodybuilders yeah, yeah. And uh, they talk about how, you know, they don't do this and they don't do that. It's tested. Strict Stric kushery. That's all I do. <laughs> it's tested. Uh, yeah. We do tests. You know, how do you expect yeah. me to? And I'm like, man, this guy's full of shit. Yeah. Like, this guy goes to my gym. Like, I know what yeah. you do, bro. I jabbed you yesterday, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's me. You're I, lying to you, bro. I, I yeah. seen you in the locker yeah. room, man. I literally had the swab <laughs> and I was rubbing your ass cheek, bro. Who are you lying to? And I was like, this is like, this is horrible. Yeah, yeah. And, um. And also there's the notion of if you're embarrassed of something that you're doing, then you shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. I have absolutely no shame. It's like I would tell people, you know what? If you want to look like, if you think it's easy, do it and mm -hmm. let's see how far you'd go. And the thing is, everyone is on juice, man. Mm. Everyone is on juice. Like you'd be surprised the most normal looking guy at the gym, mm. that 40 year old dad who has to wake up to drive his daughter to school, who has a desk job, mm. is on juice. It's probably on Anavar and Clembuterol, and it's just, you know, it's, mm. it's ridiculous. So I thought like, people should know, like this, this, this has to stop. And I said, I'm going to go on YouTube and I'm gonna start talking about it and whatever happens, happens. And I lived anyways abroad, so yeah. it didn't matter. I, 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 I did something, <clears throat> Smart where I, I use my YouTube channel is Arabic, mm. but I don't live in the Middle East. Yeah, I live in Canada, so you can get away with it. I can get away with everything. Yeah, because like I talk about whatever I want, but I, uh, but I'm, not, but I'm not even there. Mm. So, so you get to the airport and they're like, "Ah, oh, what's the door? We've been waiting for you. Come, come my friend." <laughs> dad, dad, dad. <laughs> But yeah. no, no, they're, they, <laughs> uh, and it worked out to a great advantage because they've, they've actually, I mean, people were very happy that someone was able to come up and finally talk about it. Mm. And at least I always say, you know, I, I never encourage, I don't think anyone who, who doesn't compete should use steroids. Mm. Um, even, even fitness models, like, cause I was a natural for a very long time. And I, and I said, I'd never juice unless I had achieved something naturally. And I only started after I won the university nationals and uh, university nationals and college at naturally mm -hmm. won that naturally. And then I said, all right, I do have the potential. Let's take it to the next level. And when you first did your first cycle, did you feel like Thanos? Were you just like <laughs> so much power? <laughs> it, was, it was weird, man, because like you have all these expectations <laughs> and it's just not Mm. what people think it is and i remember i was like when i i took my first jab and i did it at a pharmacy oh, no, pharmacist no. yeah pharmacist did it for me and like i was driving to college i was like okay let's just stay calm let's yeah, stay yeah. calm <laughs> you know and i was like expecting i don't know some rage is gonna yeah, happen yeah. and bro nothing happens yeah, yeah that happens because the thing is i find is most people who get road rage uh, uh sorry roid rage roid rage and road rage and road rage <laughs> too. from roid rage yeah. are dickheads in general life most people because i know 
so many bodybuilders like i've been friends with so many very high class very well good um bodybuilders giants like people that when they walk in the room you think they're going to eat you and they're the nicest most timid very nice mellow. guys mellow guys i'm a mellow guy yeah yeah do you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. um so i think if you if you're one of those guys that is just anyway just like that and then you're just normally a dickhead it's also i think so there are certain steroids that mess with your chemicals and mm. can induce uh, certain effects permanently which ones a uh, trend balloon is one trend. Of them. Yeah. i don't use trend mm. i used before and as mellow as i am i always notice that i would get these emotions or 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 thoughts that i didn't have before naturally I'd be paranoid of certain things. I was like, why the, why the hell? Why am I feeling like that? This isn't normal. You're eating a burger and you're crying. You're like, but the burger is so good. Why am I crying <laughs> right now? <laughs> but no, it, it yeah. affects your interpersonal relationships. Okay. I never really had a problem with that. But just I, I, I'm, I'm, I try and be ver- as self-aware as possible. Hmm. And I was always conscious of how I think, how I act. And I noticed every time I used trend, there were these weird thoughts and I knew, like, these thoughts, these are not my thoughts. This is something weird. Mm. And uh, I decided, like, um, th- like I, 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 my last season, I didn't use it, like, before I retire. And I'm not using it now. And I'm never going to touch that stuff again. So where do you go from? Because, again, it's becoming very popular for people to use. And like you said, everyone uses, even if it's HRT, TRT. When they get to, like, 40 years old, they're, like, they can feel the difference. They're, like not the same they don't have the same energy their sleep is not as good and that kind of stuff where, where do you draw the line of okay now it's time to stop using all these kind of things i have a cardiologist mm-hmm. and um uh that i think that's for me the number one thing your heart mm. and a lot of people miss that so a lot of bodybuilders or people who use juice would always test the liver, kidneys, and all that stuff. But the heart is the main thing. Mm. And um, it accumulates, right? So I, I, don't ex- I don't think people would do that. But I'm very, very rigorous with heart tests. And I would do uh, the most uh, intricate um, heart test available, which is a, um, a, CT, scan, a CT angio scan, okay. where they put um, a dye in you. And you go under the MRI machine and it gives you a full image of all your arteries. That sounds cool as shit. It's, it's, DK, we need to get one of those MRI machines <laughs> in here, bro. We need to do some stories. And that. Like I went to the Jabba podcast and they put some dye in me at the same time. It's such a weird feeling. Can you put glow in the dark dye? So I'm, when you put a UV light on, you're just like I'll, Halloween. I'll ask, ask them. them. Yeah, that's yeah. Like Halloween costume already done for you, bro. And just then I'll take a selfie. Walk around and naked, just put <laughs> dye in you. And you see all the veins around. It, and... <laughs> I, and I and it's not easy to do these tests either. Mm. Like like the doctor has to ha- be concerned or there has to be something wrong. But I'm very fortunate enough to have a doctor who understands what I'm doing. And I never start a season unless all my test results are mint. Mm. Like I don't want to even have any risks. My cholesterol has to be in range. Um, my calcium score has to be zero. I don't want to be at any risk uh, to have any potential dangers. So I'd always do these very intricate tests. And then I'd, 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 I'd have my cardiologist say, I give you the green light. Mm. Are they um, expensive? Are they covered in insurance or are they? Well, I live in Canada, so. So, so, you, oh. so you have to do what we do in England. Ah, oh, I feel like something's <laughs> really wrong. Oh. Doctor, yeah, yeah. doctor, please. Somebody, please, <laughs> please. Dude, it, I remember in... Uh, I used to do that stuff. I'm not proud of it, but I can't. Because NHS in England, it's free. But NHS, like I remember... Wait, what is NHS? Uh, National Health Service. Okay. So it's right. like, it's free. You go to the yeah. A&E in the hospital and they'll fix you whatever's wrong with you. Yeah. It's not like America where you just literally have an arm hanging off and they're like, show me your card. Show me your card. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. There it's free. So I remember one time we were <clears throat> we were watching the Prince Nassim fight. So we were young. That was a hell of a fight. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And then my friend was you know we we're, were boxing each other just messing around and he boxed and then i went into like tunnel vision and like you know in, in terminator where the light goes like that <laughs> yeah. and i was like the rib is open yeah, yeah? <laughs> so i just ducked in and i just gave him a lovely uppercut in his rib and then he was like i think i need to go to the hospital because when i breathe it hurts 
So we go to the hospital and I was like, listen, we have to think about something. Because he, he's like, what do you mean? I said, you can't walk up to the desk and say, I get a little tickle when I breathe. Because we turned around, there's one guy who's got bandages all over his head and, and bleeding. he's bleeding all over yeah. him. Another guy looks like he's lost his finger and he's just holding the stub. We do that And too. they're waiting. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So you think your tickle is going to get yeah. you in the front of the line. So whenever I was sick, I would always go there. I'd introduce myself. I can't breathe. I'd write my number. No, no. And, and then every now and then I'd go, uh, and I'd, I'd <laughs> faint on the floor. Because, you know, head injuries and fainting always gets you in yeah, straight away. We do you know? that. We do yeah, that too right? sometimes. Yeah, just that. Uh, we go to the hospital we're like yeah, yeah. I can't breathe I can't breathe, breathe. I can't breathe. My, my father yeah. <laughs> like, my, my left arm history. something my left yeah, yeah. arm you have to get it right I, I can smell toast yes, <laughs> right? yes, yeah you, know? yes. you have to like do the, the thingy yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm never going on WebMD again bro that's mm. the worst site ever have you ever been on WebMD no so WebMD is a site do you oh, know oh WebMD it? yeah 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 of course where if you say I hit my toenail on the thing yeah you, you have, have, can you have cancer yeah, yeah. 100%, you're dying bro. tomorrow 100 yeah. percent. so a couple of times when i've been sick i was like look i'm not going on that worst again. thing to do is google your symptoms yeah right it's the worst and the thing is i'm because that has to do also with not starting you know my cycle unless yeah. i'm 100 bro the, the smallest thing mm. i would and my my coach goes nuts yeah, yeah. with that i'd be like i we gotta stop we gotta stop yeah. there's something i'm feeling I'm feeling weird. I like how he's like that's hot, but you just need to fart. You've got like, you've got gas, bro. Be like, bro, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have work, man. Yeah, and I I have my, one of my best friends is a nurse. Okay, and I like I feel bad for him sometimes because you're like, always oh man, him. like four yeah. o'clock in the morning. Yeah, Hassan, please, something yeah. you know. I can't sleep. <laughs> it's four o'clock. I can't breathe. What was the last thing you did? Three Red Bulls. <laughs> <He's> like, that's <laughs> why you can't sleep, bro. Heart, heart palpitations. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Are you on clan? Yeah. Well, yeah, but yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I only took nine. Yeah. Like <laughs> usually, Ronnie Coleman takes twenty. You know. Yeah. Here's another thing. I find that that's the problem with roids as well. Is that again the legend Ronnie Coleman, strong as an ox, naturally. Yeah, he was naturally strong. But when you've got that kind of help your brain will go beyond its it, body's capacity yeah it loses that okay maybe squatting a car isn't a good idea for my knees <laughs> or my back do you know what i mean yeah and if you watch some of ronnie's lifts i have and we're talking about just chilling in the gym lifts yeah i have it's, like what are you doing bro like I, that bar doesn't even exist it's a longer bar they made for you to put more plates on do you know what i mean so people forget that stuff and injuries and elbows and you know you get a lot of these things because they're overloading you, sh you don't even need to live like that you know you don't even need to but i think it's it's part of the enjoyment of bodybuilding so i had that problem in fact uh, i told you i had surgery three years ago i had back surgery and it was because same thing you know going very heavy even though i didn't need to but there is this always that you know you gotta challenge yourself and that's how it becomes enjoyable. Because like mm. when you do those low reps, repetitive things, routine, it's just, it's not fun anymore. You always want to challenge yourself. The only reason why now it's a challenge for me is because now I have a back injury. So the challenge is I have to find new ways yeah, to work out around, work around it. it yeah. But if I didn't have a back, if I didn't have, if I didn't do my back surgery, and if I didn't have like a very serious issue, it would be so difficult to program my brain to go less than what I actually can do. Mm. And what you have done before. Exactly. So I think it's that's just another case. You also, I mean, yeah, that's, that's how it mm. is. How did you feel <clears throat> having those back issues and surgery as an athlete? Because I'm sure it plays, uh, you know, a big strain on your mental health when, when that, something like that happens. Yeah. And it's like, uh, this is what I do. I'm an athlete, right? So when, when the doctors are like, no 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 my friend that's what you did <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not anymore yeah um yeah i was clinically depressed for a long time okay uh i never used meds uh it's, for depression <laughs> it's, it's funny though I, I i hate using like even for my back i try yeah. i would do everything before i take an advil yeah because i like to hear what my body is telling me um and it's the same with my when i was depressed i wouldn't take meds because i want to know what state am mm. i actually in uh i had to see a psychologist for like a year and a half um and i i'm not a, i incur i think everyone needs to see 
everyone needs some therapy in their lives. But that was uh, that was a very, very rough time for me because, um, you know, it's it's suddenly like this is what I do. Mm. So what did he do? And, and <clears throat> how how was it rough for you? Because I think it's important for people to kind of know what stages you went through because people could be going through the same thing and how you progressed through those stages. So it was a combination of two things. Um, I was in a relationship for eight years and I'm very, I'm the type of guy that likes to settle. I don't, I don't like to mm. party. I don't, you know, very, uh, I'm a homebody too, you know? Mm. And, um, you know, my relationship, at least in my head was great. And, uh, we were kind of like best friends or one entity or whatever. And we've been through so much together. And after my back surgery, I had my back surgery. And then two months later, that relationship ended. Hmm. So the, the idea here was, you know, as human beings, we like to be in, we like to feel like we're in control of our lives. And I think the most difficult thing is when you feel that you are not in control of your own life. So it was two hits in one. I lost control of my career and what I love doing. And I lost control of my relationship. So it was very, very difficult to deal with both these things. Like, and back surgery isn't a joke. Mm. You can't really do much of anything. And um, and suddenly all the home responsibilities were kind of thrown at me. Uh, shared custody, two kids. I had to take, well, suddenly, you know, take my kids to school, do their lunches, uh, do their dinners. Mm. And all while, like, I'm recovering from my back injury. And being depressed as well, because you don't want to make your own dinners when you're it, depressed. Let exactly. Alone. And it was very difficult because, like, you know, my daughter would come to me, tell me a story at school. And it was so difficult to, like, kind of smile and listen. And, like, mm -hmm. sometimes I'll be like, you know, baby, I, you know, just daddy needs to be alone right now. And uh, it was very difficult to handle. But um, I, I, I always try and use rationale in certain things so like okay what what can i do and then i thought of you know seeing a professional what does what what, what does someone who want to, wants to lose weight do they see a professional and that kind of thing mm. so i was like this is the same thing it's just a different muscle it's my head is not okay mm. i need to get that fixed so you know i started therapy and slowly slowly i started implementing certain things uh, I started getting into um, Stoic philosophy. Okay, uh, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. And there is one sentence that I fell in love with. It's like people always see obstacles as roadblocks in their journeys, but actually the obstacle becomes the way. Mm. It is the way of your journey. It's not something that's blocking you. That's the actual yeah, path yeah. to walk through. Yeah, yeah. And it reminds me of, so what happened to me kind of reminds me of two incidents before. My first major incident was a motorcycle accident where I split my kneecap in half. And uh, that was two years before I won the college at nationals. Wow. And I was so devastated at the time because like, you know, damn it. You know, I'm not a popular guy at school. I got nothing. Bodybuilding or lifting weights is the only thing that I have. Now I have to start over. But when I started over, um, a friend of mine kind of suggested that uh, I kind of like do videos and stuff mm. like on my road to recovery or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And YouTube was just starting out, you know. I was like, that's kind of silly. Like, who wants to watch that? So I did it anyway. And then when I won the college at Nationals, I did like a motivational YouTube video. And that thing went viral, like 2 million views at the time. Wow. And that started my Facebook page. Now, here's the very interesting part. When I moved to Canada, um, I told you I had the, I won nationals 2012, did the job interview, didn't get the job interview. And then I competed in 2014. I got uh, food poisoning. I didn't place at all. And then I got, uh, I got into a house fire. My, my house was, was on fire. My Why is everything fire. burning around you, bro? First I know. First it was the oil nuts. rig, then it was the house. Yeah. DK, get the sprinklers. <laughs> Put the sprinklers you, on in the do, studio, bro. <laughs> do you guys have insurance here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like whole leg was on fire. Wow. All of it. Oil spilled on my foot. And again, I had to start over. And I remember in the ICU, in the ICU, I told my girl at the time, bring my phone. She's like, what, you need to call your dad? And like 
mind you, there are doctors all around me because like the fire was like the oil was everywhere on my face, my shoulders, third degree burns on my thighs, Whoa. my foot. Both of them were French fried from the oil. And I said, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm going to make use of this. Yeah. And I took my phone and I told her, I want you to record all of this. Wow. And I'm going to make an, an amazing comeback story out of it. And 2015, I came back to bodybuilding and I won the Canadian Nationals again. And that's when my social media started blowing up. 2016, I won, um, it's kind of like, it's called the Ben Weeders, ben Weeders Legacy Cup. It's like North all of North America. Yeah. 2017, won that again and turned pro. And then 2018 was like my, you know, knockout year where I, I won a pro show for my first rookie year, did the Olympia. 2019, uh, I qualified for the Olympia. I didn't do it. And then 2020 was my back surgery and uh, my, my breakup. And um, while, you know, with, with the therapy, I had, I had my coach actually now. Uh, he, was, he was a very good friend at the time. And he had gone through a similar experience and, and he, he helped me a lot with, with, you know, the mindset on how to approach something like that. And, um, and it was a good opportunity for me to develop myself and to be, you know, to, to have more experience moving on to the next chapter of my life. And then I kind of thought of the same thing. It's like, this is the same thing that happened before the back. Now it's my back. Now I'm a pro. Now I have a way bigger social media following. Mm. I am going to make an epic comeback. And even if I don't place well, just the fact that after back surgery, I'm able to step on stage again for me is nothing short, but you know, honestly, a miracle. I'm very grateful for that. And that was the plan. And I think that's when I started coming out of it because the challenge was there the challenge again. Came back again yeah. I was like, this, and this is a, a, a difficult challenge. Like I have to find new ways to train. I have to avoid a lot of certain movements and I have to some way try and gain back or look like an actual professional competitor after losing everything because like it's three years not or two and a half years not doing much yeah that's crazy bro so where did you get into the because one side of what you do as well as a motivational speaking right yeah where, where did that click where you were like i also want to do this i that never was in the plan i you just had a, a rent one day and then it was no i like, guess i guess i always kind of expressed <clears throat> how i felt like with my injuries and my comebacks and I do YouTube videos like on the spot. Like I'd be in my car and I'd have these cer certain thoughts. I'd take out the camera and just start speaking out. I never thought of being a motivational speaker. Like it's not, mm. you know, not something I really thought of. And then in 20, uh, I think last year, uh, there was a pro show in Egypt. And uh, they wanted me to do like an actual full speech there. Like stage and everything. Yeah, yeah. And that was my first one. And uh, there were, I think, two other guys. But my speech was like, it was, till now, people keep repeating the reels yeah. and reposting a lot of clips from it. And uh, I guess I was, was just naturally good at it. Is it something that you want to continue to do? After you saw, like, hold on, th there might be something there. Is that something that you think? I mean, I... It's hard because I don't look at myself that way. Like I'm, I'm. I I always say I'm an introvert who pretends to be an extrovert. Okay. Or like I'm forced to be an extrovert because of my social media and I, yeah. for my business I have to be. So it's uh it's kind of weird for me. But um, I, I have I have a speech next week. Right? There you go. He's, he's like, <laughs> oh, I don't know. He's like, but I got a cool speech coming <laughs> next week. Dude. Yeah, the D Dubai Muscle Show. They uh, they hit me up, and um, there is the Wellness Talk Dubai Active. Okay, yeah, I know. Yeah. So I have a seminar there. It's on the uh, it's on the thirtieth. Mm. But the crazy part is is that the guy who who collabed me with them, he's like, no, 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 this is not enough. We need we need one of those Arabic speeches. Mm. And they're like, we we can't have him do two. It's impossible. And we never did an Arabic speech in Dubai Muscle Show. Mm. But they kind of worked it out. And they're like, and the guy called me like two weeks ago. He's like, you have two speeches. And I was like, what? I don't. What are you talking about? He's like, you're doing one on the main stage on the 29th, which is, I think, the Saturday of the show. Uh, after the uh, like after the the first round of judging or whatever, or between the prejudging and finals. And then you have your Dubai active the next day in English. Man, Dubai Muscle Show, I love. 
Like I've I, never I've been, been there. You never been to the Dubai Master Show? It's my friend's show, Nick Blair. So he started really? the Dubai Master Show, yeah. That's crazy. Um, and I used to go to all of them. Right? I remember the first one where it was and how much smaller it was. Well, when did it start? Like it, it started about, I think, five, six years ago. Well, yeah, I told you. I've never been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, five, six years ago in yeah. Marina. And then it got bigger and bigger and bigger than Trade Center. And then the first one was, uh, the second one, I think, was in Trade Center. And then it was just one hall. And then two halls and i think now they got five halls in the trade center yeah it's massive going. and people are coming from all over the world and they're getting good people there's always ronnie coleman there there's always you know kai's always there yeah you have everyone and everyone and i think the beautiful thing about bodybuilding is that so like so many people turn to it after injuries or after you know what lack of confidence and that and it really can change because look at the end of the day even when i was training and stuff it's like i used to say to people hey listen you naked is the best outfit that you can wear. Like you can buy all of these Prada t-shirts and Versace's and that, but if you make your body symmetrical and nice, and I'm not talking about bodybuilding, even yeah. if you just put on some muscle, you can put a one dollar t-shirt on and look amazing. That's like true. literally a t-shirt from Splash, and you will look amazing. Do you know what I mean? So people need to kind of look out for that. And like I said, with it, with injuries and stuff, I have a friend of mine. His name you might know him is uh, Bionic Body. Yeah, of course. So his. He has no uh, I know, I bottom know. half of yeah, his yeah, legs. Yeah. He's coming on the show as well. It'll be a good one. Um, just inspirational people. Like he, he is. He it's amazing at, what he does. He His life could have gone two ways. Exactly. It I know what gone, you mean. It could have gone depressed. Uh, growing up like that, I'm going to have no friends. Um, look I, at him. I'm, he's a, he's a bro, social media sensation. And he's a monster, bro. Yeah, I've seen. I know. He's a monster. Like You look at him, you see him in real life, and you're like, dude, you're a monster. <laughs> yeah. But you wouldn't think that somebody who... Who has like, and the funny thing is that the body is so resilient, right? Human beings are so resilient. Like you'd think if that happened to you and you lost both your legs, halas, it's over. So I'm going over. depressed. I'm going into my room. I'm not coming out ever again. Like, do you know what I mean? But so many people that have these kind of things, and then you just see the resilience where the something inside clicks and goes, no. That's what Dragon Ball Z teaches, you. right? Yeah. You need one of those tattoos here. Like, you know, the Americans, they get that. What would Jesus do? You need what to get Vegeta what would Vegeta do? do? Yeah. <laughs> what so would Goku whenever, do? Yeah, whenever you're in trouble and stuff, just be like, what would, what yeah. would Goku and Vegeta do? Yeah. Right? No, but yeah, like the, the human body is just resilient, dude. It just the comeback that it can do. Yeah, I mean, you know, they say that's also genetic. The the mental side of it? Yeah. Like being resilient is mm. actually a genetic trait. And there is a story about um, like an alcoholic abusive father. Mm-hmm. who had uh, who had twins one of them never touched alcohol again became a very successful man and the other one oh yeah, was, an yeah, yeah 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 and they blamed it on the upbringing right one of them was i think one of them was raised with the mom one of them was ra- raised with the dad right i don't know the details of it but i think something like that <coughs> you need to fact check your stuff when you, come, <laughs> when you come on here with with inspiring stories bro you fact, funny thing is i have twin boys and one of them is crazy like me he's got a um, little bit of problems like uh, the other one's just like the mom and like my one looks like me. The, her one looks like her. Really? My one has the same blood type as me. Her one has the same blood type as her. Like, it's crazy how these things can just go through the genes like that. Yeah, I guess when you realize, I mean, life is not fair, you know, and everyone... You're saying it's not fair because he looks like me? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. But don't worry. Don't listen to him, bro. You can be anything that you want to be. Yeah. Right? Um, but I mean, life is, uh, everyone has all kinds of things that yeah. they have to go through. And I, I think it's pointless to kind of, there are some people who are, who are going to victimize themselves no matter what happens. Mm. But again, like I always go back to that saying where like these, these obstacles and problems that you have, that's your way. That's going to lead you to where you lead. Every single one of my accidents had a positive outcome. Mm. The like maybe if i would have if i never had my back surgery maybe i would have never really placed anywhere at the olympia maybe it was just too hard for me but the fact that i just came back or i'm gonna maybe compete again at the olympia maybe in the coming year or two that itself is gonna be like 10 times more valuable than me placing at a top 10 Mm. because this guy is he's not he's coming back from a back surgery. Your goals changed, your your reason, your why changed. As your well. why changed, yeah. exactly. And the whole notion of the story changed. You're not just a bodybuilder who's making it to the top ten. 
you're someone who basically had a doctor said hey, it was written I'm, off yeah you're done you can't do what you do anymore yeah and i think that itself because people like to relate to others people like someone with a story if if you just bodybuild and you go on it's everyone a lot of people do that yeah. but when there's a lot of factors and like problems and real life situations and i think that's one of the reason why maybe my youtube is doing well or did well because i always portrayed the other side of social media yeah. everyone just posts their highlights their yeah, the amazing yeah, yeah. moments and after some time like you can't always relate to that and not everyone's gonna you know appreciate all just the good moments so when you post like the real stuff like no nah, man it's it's not good i'm mm. not doing well right now and then you become or overcome that like everyone instantly connects with that because you see a guy all right he was able to do this then i can do it too i remember when i stepped uh i stepped off stage the first thing I thought of was like, I'm going to get butchered online, man. Mm. This is going to be, I, I was telling my coach and he too, I was like, I'm like this is going to be bad, bro. Mm. Man, I went backstage. So many people like with the hugs and everything, they're like, bro, just the fact that you came back is amazing. And a, a lot of bodybuilders like, you know what? I had, a, I had a muscle tear. I had a joint issue. And I'd watch your videos of your comeback and be like, you know what? If he's doing it, then I can do yeah. it too. It's and And... It's the same thing like that, even with when you see businesses flourish. That's why I get so confused when haters are happy that someone is not doing yeah, well. Yeah. I'm like, bro, that could happen to you. Yeah, you know that, time, right? Yeah. Like, do you realize that? But when you see someone doing well, overcoming obstacles, that just means that you can do it too because, you know, you're both human. So, hmm. yeah, that's how I see things. How important is it for somebody to have a coach when it comes to... Oh. online coaching and how do you differentiate yourself from because i'm not gonna lie i know a lot of people and i've been experienced in the industry who just make these cooker cut, cookie cutter programs that if you sold five of them and these five guys came together they'd realize that they all have the same program I, I i love that because i i sent last night i sent the wrong program to someone mm. and he's like bro i think there's a mistake uh you, you sent me the wrong program and i looked it was a different program mm. And then I, because I, uh, uh, and his was already made. I just clicked on the wrong one. So I sent him his. And I was like, I said that in the email. I was like, at least you'll know that these are not cookie yeah, cutter yeah. programs. Yeah. Because it was a different program. But, uh, no, it's always important. Like, I have a coach. And, um, but, but I don't even coach bodybuilders, though. I don't like coaching bodybuilders. Mm. Uh, my, my. Just gen population. I love coaching the average Joe. That's my favorite thing. Because, like. They get so happy, man, when the guy has like a belly all his whole life. And all he wants is just to see those goddamn abs. Mm. Like that's all he wants. And then finally he sees them. He's the happiest person in the world. But you coach a bodybuilder, not all, but I mean a big majority. They do the show and you, you went all out for this guy, right? Place second. Fuck this. Yeah, yeah, then it's yeah. your fault. It's your yeah. fault. Yeah. Why, why did we do this like that? Yeah. And I remember that that was my last client. We did play second and it was, I think, like his first show and it was like a provincial show. Mm. And it was amazing. Like, I was very happy. Yeah. And he was like, really sad. I was like, what's wrong with you? He's like, I wanted to win. And I just thought to myself, yeah, I'm not doing this yeah, anymore. Yeah. <laughs> You're not the type of person that I need. Yeah. It's, it's not worth the effort. Like, I'd rather coach someone who, who, who would just... And also... I know this will sound weird, but I don't like encouraging, like I do it, PEDs. Mm. But I like after a certain point, I think that also comes with the territory of being a social media person. Um, I openly admit that I do it, mm. but I can't be that much associated with the fact that I tell others to do it as well. Mm. So I always tell, tell my clients like, it's always best to do a natural transformation. If you're not competing, you don't need uh these chemicals too because w what are you doing mm -hmm. like and the whole idea is with my coaching is better lifestyle healthier uh, yeah and the problem is as well is we unfortunately live in the generation where the people just want things now fast they want the results fast it's like yeah two months transformation like when I, people used to come to me clients and they'd be you know severely overweight and they'd be like i want to look like you in three months and i'd be like 
Bro, I've been training for 20 years. <laughs> yeah. 20 years I've been training and dieting and doing two cardios a day. And yeah. do you know what I mean? And you, how, how long did it take you to get to this? To like, get to that 20, size? 20, 20 years. Of eating. Of, of them getting fat. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, so you think in three months, your whole body and everything mm. is going to change and all your cells and everything is going to, like people don't understand that because they see these. And here's another thing. For the love of God, stop doing these fake transformation pictures. Like anyone who has an eye for it realizes that. Okay, in that one, she's got her trousers pulled up higher. In this one, she's standing yeah. much closer to the camera. Yeah. That one, she's standing further. Obviously, if you put anyone and arching, further away. And arching yeah, the bike. Arching, and, all that, and even yeah. guys, if one is close to the camera and one is further away, obviously anything further away looks smaller. Like you haven't changed at all. And the lighting too. Lighting. Um, I've shaved my chest. And yeah. My, and my thing yeah. Is, obviously without hair, you look more shredded. <laughs> yeah. like it's, but uh, it's funny you say that. I, 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 I deliberately sometimes post very average transformations. Mm. And it sucks because like the comments are like, really? We're paying, uh, you know, that much for this? And and I'm this like, is no, real. <laughs> this is real, bro. Yeah. Like, and this, these are like achievable, you know, results. Like not everyone's going to lose freaking 10 kilos in 12 weeks. Mm. Some people will lose like four. And like you have to put in consideration their lifestyle. If the, they work full time, if they have kids and all that. And it's like a step by step process. So I like to post all kinds of things. But uh, unfortunately, I think people post these fake transformations is because of the pressure of social media. Again, it comes back to to always having to have your A game on. Mm. But the problem with that, it's the same exact thing as posting your highlights, is that you're going to get the shallow end of the audience. You're not going to get quality viewers and an audience that's following you. You're going to get very shallow people. Mm -hmm. And who are most likely not even going to buy your services. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather have 5,000 very genuine, normal people than 100,000 of these people. 100%. Who are just, yeah, 100%. I was having a conversation with <clears throat> someone the other day and they were like, they were bringing up the point that they have so many more followers than me. And I was like, yeah, but bro, look at the quality of followers. Your people are kids who are watching you dance for two seconds on a TikTok. <laughs> like you're doing nothing for nothing. My people are intellectuals that will sit through an hour's conversation. To learn something. To learn something. Like my ones are warriors, bro. My ones are smart people. They're people who, do you know what I mean? Yeah. They want to learn. They want to laugh. They want to, your people are literally people with an attention span of three seconds. And you're doing TikTok dances, bro. Like don't ever compare. Yeah. Yeah, but again, it's the problem with social media, right? But you can always use it to against you or for you. I can't use it against me. I'm the man. That's the way it is. Roll, it? roll your sleeves up a little <laughs> just, more. Just in case people want it. <laughs> Can we get that camera on me? It's been on his veins. <laughs> there it is, bro. There it is. So how did you get into the cosplaying? Because I saw uh, a few of the... Uh... So uh... By the way, I'm going to mention my friend. You don't know who he is. Let's you, not say any names yeah, after this, all right? Yeah. So it says it's Dubai's biggest secret. Um, I don't know, man. I think well, that was I, the time where I was like kind of depressed. Okay. And um, that year, I kind of tried to fill that you know feeling with buying like fancy stuff. I bought a fancy nice car. Mm -hmm. It just didn't do much. How old are you now? I'm um, 36. Okay, so it wasn't midlife crisis. Then. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm getting mine soon, bro. <laughs> um, and uh, I thought, what if I use this car differently? And I don't know what I saw or something, but I think um, I was like, maybe I can, like, I still had a decent physique, had a good car. And I was like, maybe I can dress up as a superhero and go visit, like, kids or stuff mm. and it was such a far fa you know one of those ideas where you're like watching tv and you think of it and you kind of like daydream and like yeah, yeah. it'd be so cool but you never do anything yeah for some reason that thought was like really stuck in my head and i started i had no idea that this whole cosplay world dude, existed the cosplay world is huge dude no i was clueless and the quality bro i know it's insane because like i said i was speaking to batman dxp who will remain nameless. I don't, yeah. I don't even know who he is. <laughs> and so I was like, I always watch and I see like, he's like, oh, I just got this specially made. 
or I just got these new gloves or these boots. Yeah. Or, and and we're talking about how much the stuff costs. And when he told me, I was like, what? Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? I was like, I, oh, so it's not from Amazon. So, <laughs> like, yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. the thing. So when I when I was like starting out with the idea, I was like, the first, obviously, I have no muscle nothing. suit from Amazon. Yeah. yeah. So I go Batman costume. And I see all these things from Walmart. I'm like, well, that doesn't look real. Because yeah. in my head, I was like, I want to I wanna like, like, I want the kid to be shocked. Yeah, yeah. Whoever I go see. And I still didn't even think on how I'm going to do this. So I start browsing. And then I see like, I guess, like a link of a cosplay. And then the suits started getting expensive. So yeah. we're talking like from 200 to $400, the Walmart thing. Yeah. And then went up to 1200 I was like, oh, shit. But this looks, this looks yeah, better. Looks like, yeah. And then I start with the high quality Batman replica suit. Mm. And then I stumble on all the Instagram people. Yeah. And I'm like, holy shit, this shit exists. Dude, it's a world. It's a whole world. And it's like, blow, it's like the real actual yeah. replica of the thing. So I get in contact with one of them and, and they make a suit for me. And uh, so now I have a suit, I have the car, and I have no idea what to do. Like, what am I going to go bang on people's house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, see yeah, your son, please. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Call the police, you yeah. know. Uh, so I made a post on uh, one of these Facebook groups of my um, of my neighborhood. Okay. It's called West Island Community. And I was like, I was, I was so embarrassed, man. <laughs> Because like yeah, I'm respected. Like I've got, yeah. <laughs> I've got a reputation yeah. around it. It's not just that. Like I'm yeah. a grown ass man, yeah. you know. And I'm like, gosh, should I really do this? Yeah. Looking, Batman yeah. looking for Robin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, interviews at ten o'clock on the swings in the park. <laughs> yeah. I, I made a post on that, and and um, and I say hi guys, and I, I have the suit on, and I have the car next to me. The car gave it some validation. Yeah. So um, I said, I'm looking for anyone who has any children with disabilities or is bullied at school. I will come visit your child absolutely for free uh, as Batman. And, you know, I post this is my social media pages. Like, I'm not a creep. Hey, hey. You know, ignore and, the bag of sweets. Yeah. That I'm holding <laughs> in my hand. Yeah. And, uh, and I had no idea how that would turn out. Yeah. No idea. Bro. CNN picked it up, right? Uh, it was um, one of those. Yeah, one of those. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, CBC, CBC. Yeah. yeah, yeah, CBC Radio and CBC National. Yeah, CBC National picked it up, and uh, and a lot of other channels, Omni News, uh, CTV Montreal, mm. went crazy, and uh, yeah, I visited a few of them, and. Uh, I guess that was it. And then when I went to Egypt for my speech, mm. I brought the suit with me and that was not easy to do because that was a whole second yeah, suitcase. Bro. And Egypt- How do you explain that in customs? If they're like, firstly, yeah. it's going through the thing yeah. and the guy's just like sitting there on his phone and he looks up, he's just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Excuse exactly. me, my brother, what? come, come, come. Yeah. <laughs> Opens it and he's just like, uh, why well, you have a Batman suit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. And it was hot. Yeah. Like hot, and uh, I uh, I decided I want to visit the Children's Cancer Hospital in Egypt. Okay, nice. Yeah, and uh, that that felt good, uh, especially at the time. That time, you know, it wasn't easy, and uh, that was fulfilling. But anytime you do something with pure intentions and coming from the heart, right? It's why I stopped. Yeah. Uh, that was the last one I did, because after that, I felt my. I felt there was like a little taste of like, oh, wow, this is you know, so nice being all, all over the news. Mm. And then I stopped doing it because I felt like part of me started to or was about to do it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. And I never I, the hospital thing was the last thing I did. And I didn't want to do it again. Look, if you want to make some money, I think we should do a, uh, a bullying campaign where kids <laughs> kids can hire you. To go and intimidate the other kids that are bullying them. Yeah. So literally, they'll be coming out of school. You'll be hiding behind the tree, and then you'll just be like, "Hey, you're fucking with Tam." <laughs> <laughs> Not a good move. <laughs> like, yeah, right? until they call the police. And, yeah, well, and look, you're Batman. But jump in your car. Year I jump in your car and man. drive fast, bro. Like you never seen a Batman movie before. He gets chased by police all the time. Bro. I've seen your police here. <laughs> yeah, what right. they drive. Yeah, out here. Yeah, yeah. Don't do it out here. Do it yeah. in there. There's more space to run away. That's true. In Toronto. So what advice do you have for, for people who who want to open up a YouTube channel or want to kind of chase their dreams in the bodybuilding world? Yeah. And and this one, I want you to look in this camera here specifically. 
Um, it's, it's what my speech is going to be about. Just find something that makes you happy, fulfilling. And, I, and I've been on both sides where I've, uh, you know, I made a lot of money and I had bodybuilding taken away from me. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't happy because I wasn't doing what I love doing. So find something you love doing. And because when you do that, it's, all the work is genuine. So not only will you get the right people to follow you and to watch you, but you're also going to be very, very fulfilled and you're going to do it at your highest ability possible. And you're going to be good at it because you're going to always want to do it and you're always going to get better at it. Don't, and I see a lot of people do that. Don't do whatever social media, YouTube for likes and, and, and views. It's a very, very short journey and it leads to nowhere. It goes nowhere. It's unfulfilling and... I mean, you're not going to get much out of it. Even as a person, you won't really grow much. But when you find something that you love and you get so good at it, you're going to be able to inspire other people, other people to do the same. Yeah, love that. One of my favorite quotes, Confucius, choose a job you love and you'll never work a day in your life. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Fact. Fact. We don't need to fact check that one. <laughs> I, used, I used to use that when I used to chat with girls. I'm like, Confucius says... <laughs> Another thing I'd like to add is that when you do something you love and you face obstacles, they're, they're not as bad as they seem to be. And eventually, like the Stoics say, the obstacle becomes the way. Yeah, that's something I talked about before in the episode that we were talking about. Uh, your camera is not showing on the screen. Now. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah. I mean, I, I saw something yesterday and it was like, if only we could be told that these are the good old days. Do That's you know what nice. I mean? Like, you're always going to look back at a time. And, and be, be like, like these they, were the good old those days. Were the good old days. So you're these always are the, the good, good old days. days. Right you're now. always in the good old days, yeah. I think parents, parents should work more on teaching their kids to be happy more than being successful. Bro, 100%. And I'm, me and my wife are really into this kind of way of teaching. I decided I'm not going to do my mom's way and beat them any chance I can <laughs> and just explain and help them to like even now they're only five years old but when somebody asks them what do you want to do when you grow up you know their reply is what do I want to be or what do I want to do as a job because they want to be happy first like I made yeah. sure that they understand and then okay I'll be a doctor or whatever but I the, be happy initial, the initial thing is I want to be happy in whatever I'm doing, in whatever I've chosen, that that's the most important thing because I, I, it's strange how the world has come to be this place where so many people are doing a job they're not happy doing. It's, it's insane. It's insane. I know people have to make a living and they have to cover things, but we also live. Short. We also live in a world where opportunity right now is at its highest. Mm. You can do anything you want and make a living Especially out of it. Especially with social media, man. That's it. So, I mean, back then I can understand, you know, uh, World War yeah, that, and you yeah, got to yeah. work at a coal mine. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to be happy working at a coal mine. You yeah. got to do what you got to do. Depends what song you're singing and which whistle. And you, <laughs> which songs you whistle, bro. Whistle while you work. No, I get what you're saying. But Hey, no, man, you, if you see the movie Shawshank Redemption, yeah. they were happy in yeah, there because yeah, yeah. they had friends and they were, yeah. you know, all together. And I don't know if you read one of yeah, the of characters course. when yeah. he came out of prison yeah he he killed himself didn't yeah. he yeah so he was which character was it, it wasn't uh it was no not red the the old guy the librarian the prison librarian when he was let out and he was back into with the society. bird because yes. like, was the bird or the mouse the mouse I, the mouse yeah uh, no that's green mile that's, that's green, green mile, mile. we're getting man, our movies mixed up get it right bro man. you're messing everything up um is there anything that you feel like we missed out or anything that you uh that you feel like you want to cover? Nah, chase happiness, guys. Don't don't chase views, followers. When you chase happiness, everything else follows. Easy, Even money. Easy to say when you've got a million followers on <laughs> YouTube, bro. How how long did that process take you to to get yourself to? Two, uh, I started two thousand nine when I did that motorcycle motivational yeah. video. Two thousand nine. See that again? It's one of those things people don't realize Time. how long it took you to get to where you are now. Yeah, a lot of time, a lot of time and effort. Yeah. But I love doing it. Yeah. I love, I love, ed I, I edit my own videos. Mm. 
And I, uh, I, you know, I, I find the motivational music. Mm. I edit, I cut, all that stuff. And um, I, I, like I, like you said, I, I don't work. Yeah, I wake up, and it's it's a uh, it's, every day is just a fun day for me. Mm. What does the future hold for Dora now? Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, um, I'm go- I'm gonna compete again in a couple of weeks. I have the motivational speech next. I'm getting a vibe that one of the organizers in the Dubai Muscle Show wants to do, wants to take that motivational part and kind of run with it. Mm. So maybe there's potential in that. Um, again, I don't know how good I am with the motivational stuff because it, 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 I see all these motivational speakers and I'm like, I don't, I don't think I sound like that. Look, bro, look at the views on your, on your clips. With the motivational speaker. Now, when you say you see a lot, a lot of motivational speakers, remember again when you don't mean for it to be a motivational message in that way. Yeah, yeah. That's when it's good. Yeah, you probably. look at you look at a hundred people who look. You go on their Instagram profile and it's life coach, motivational speaker, and I'm like, motivating who and speaking to who? You've got 18 followers. Like every <laughs> everyone claims that they are doing this yeah. now. So I think most things in life. I should, I should that put, kind of fall by accident, I right? Put that on my Instagram. Yeah, man. right. Motivational speaker, life coach. That's it. Do it. Yeah. At least you have the followers to, <laughs> to do it, bro. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Pleasure is Time mine. Time flies man. when you're having fun, man. Pleasure is um, mine. You're more than welcome anytime. This is your house, and uh, we have to see you when you're back in Dubai. Absolutely, Again. absolutely. You got any plans to come back? Because I know that a lot of your uh, followers are in this kind of region as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I, I take things, you know, one step at a time. Do you have any plans of living back in an Arabic country or are you too westernized now that it's, you, you, just, it's, you have it's, the comforts? It's funny, you know, I, I always spoke about that. Um, the first reason why I I wasn't able to uh, act on that thought was my kids. Hmm. I can never leave my kids. I can say a lot of times I'm frustrated. I'm like, fuck this man. In two years, I'm going to move out and, you know, I'll just visit them like in summer. I can't do it. Hmm. But. I'm glad I came here because I realized I think I'm happier at a calmer environment. Mm. I think uh, this Dubai is beautiful, mm. magical, fairy tale. I, like the amount of times I was going to hit other cars because I was looking at the buildings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, uh, it's too much. Mm. You have to always have your A game on all the time. I can't do that. Mm. I, I prefer peace. And I know if I came here, I'd make honestly five times is more money but my peace is is a lot more valuable than that i need mm-hmm. peace i i i love the, you know how canada's winters humbles everyone mm-hmm. you know um and i only got to realize this after seeing this place it's like so like way too high energy that's if you want it to be though it doesn't have to be like that bro it's how you treat because you're you're living here in holiday mode. I'm not in holiday. I'm on I'm in work mode. Yeah, but but I mean like visiting this place and this yeah. place and this place. Yeah, I get you're it. not living here, it's living here. But it's all other things. Like I like nature. Mm. I like walking in the park. What? Oh. We got nature okay. here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You think I put the tree next to you, bro? We got yeah. all four seasons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like fall. I like you know the t- leaves falling, the mm. orange trees. Uh, there's just something very magical about that kind of environment for me, at least. Mm. Um, it, uh, I'm, my personality fits more in Canada. I told you, mm. introvert who has to pretend to be an extrovert. No, I get you. Like I said, I was raised in London, but I've just had enough of that. That cold, all that stuff. I'm the opposite to you. I'm that meme. I don't want peace. I want problems. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. problems only. Yeah, you get I'm to here. enjoy. You get yeah. to enjoy summer that much more though after the cold winter. Yeah, no, nah, I'm good. Thanks. No, okay. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for coming in, bro. Hey, you know what? your heat, your heat is is worse than our winters. Nah. Yes. Nah. No, you can't walk. No, well, I'll tell you why it's not. Because, it's 30 because degrees. Because we have ACs that make everything okay. You don't have heaters that make everything okay. No. You, if you park out in summer, yeah. and I lived in Oman for like a year, okay, you can't go in, you can't touch your car. What do you want to touch your car for? 
What do you mean? If you're parked in a parking you're lot. You're parked. Why do you want to touch a car for? You're yeah, you go. Actually. You leave to go to work. <laughs> you go, really? Your car is there. It doesn't matter if you can't touch it. It's parked. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a cold. Like, I like the cold. No, I'm done with that. Yeah. I'm done with that. I'm done. Again, bro, thank you so much for coming <laughs> it down. It was a pleasure. Um, and we'd Real like pleasure. to see you again. Let's When, you, when you move man. out here, then we'll do another episode. Yeah. <laughs> when, when you move from Canada when the girls are a bit older. Um, I've been AJ. He's been Mahmoud Dorra. Boom. <laughs>